All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM here in lovely blue sky San Diego today. And I am joined by Ken Keys, who is in Vancouver, Canada. How are you doing, Ken? Well, well I'm doing very well. Thank you, John. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Ken is an author of many books now, I think at least three or four at this stage, correct? Yeah, well, it's, I guess, three and a half. There was sort of a half a book years ago, so we'll still count it, though. Yeah, and those books are Deliberate Leadership. Uh, why, aren't, why Aren't You More Like Me? Discover the Secrets to Understanding Yourself and Others. And your latest book, The Quest for Purpose, A Self-Discovery Process to Find It and Live It. So um, let's start talking a little bit about the quest for purpose, because that seems to be something that a lot of people struggle with today. And, and it's something mm -hmm. that I am... Um, that I often wonder about now when uh, with people about how often do they ask themselves why they're doing what they're doing and what really motivates them and you know why are they getting up every day to do whatever job or whatever it is they do. So what was the driver behind you writing the, the quest for purpose? Well, it's interesting. I went through that whole process myself uh, way mm -hmm. back in 1989 when I got into this industry. So this is while we record this, my 31st or 32nd year in this profession. And I hired a coach out of Seattle, Washington, and his program was called Source. And I knew that I was supposed to be here to encourage others, mm -hmm. but really who was I to serve and what was my content about? So my purpose in life is to help others to live, lead, and work on purpose. And after spending six months working with Mike and fine tuning it, it's really been my life's work. So I'm now owner of Consulting Resource Group, which is a publishing company of psychological tools and assessments. Uh, we're one of the top companies in the world around helping to create self-awareness, emotional intelligence. And, you know, and your, your question about purpose, a lot of times, you know, people don't know it. And the reason they don't know it or aren't even aware of it is, is like the question's too big or they're just so mm. busy being busy, they don't pay attention to these things. They'll spend more time, you know, going out and having fun with their friends than really paying attention to their life. And, sure. and unfortunately, that the data supports it, John. I mean, you know, when Gallup did that study a few years ago and said, what percentage of employees around the world, 142 countries were engaged, and it was only 13%. The mm -hmm. highest engaged workforce in the world is in US and Canada at 29%. So that's still 70%. Who don't like what they do for mileage irritate below. Yeah, and I love this uh, where it says uh, uh, ninety percent, nearly ninety percent of employees are dissatisfied with their work from it, indifference to active loathing. And uh, that was the part that jumped out at me because I was thinking like active loathing means that you actually have to, that you're actually actively, you know, you have to actually do something in order to hate your job that much. You're spending energy on it. Um, which is so if that's if you're expending a major amount of energy every day hating what you do, I mean, that should be a good sign that you need to start taking a step back. Right. And, you know, for individuals that are watching or listening mm -hmm. to this show, you know, my encouragement is, first of all, you start where you are. Don't beat yourself up because you yeah. haven't got it figured out because you don't need to create more stress. But mm -hmm. the first thing is, is you need to own your own space is that purpose is the responsibility of the individual. If you don't know your purpose, then your purpose becomes finding your purpose and right. getting clear about what you want to do. Now, I went on a lifetime journey doing that, fine tuning it. And so we, I remember having um, dinner with uh, Dick Bowles who wrote the book, What Colors Your Parachute? You know, it sold mm -hmm. 10 or 20 million copies. Right. He's now passed away. And I asked him the question, you know, with uh, all the programs out there and workshops and podcasts, you know, why do we still have so many people confused about life? And he instantly responded and said, because people have not been willing to do the work. Yeah. It takes effort. You I mean, I personally journaled for nearly a year to start to fine tune what are the elements and what is it that I'm supposed to do? So, you know, life continues to evolve. When I got into this industry, there wasn't even email, not to date any myself. I started very, mm -hmm. very young, yeah. obviously, John, right? Sure, so a bit like myself. And so now it's evolved to here we are, we're doing, you know, webinars and online podcasts with video, e-courses, all those things. So it's evolved in terms of how it's doing it and how we're doing it, pardon me. But we, the core message is still the same. How can we help people to realize their potential? I think the saddest state, and for those of you that are listening and watching, and that's the accountability to you. 
mm-hmm. is to mm-hmm. not be fully engaged in life is a disservice to yeah. not only you, but everybody around you, because we're not getting that right energy. And you now, you know, mm-hmm. life's not perfect. There are going sure. to be days where even with what I'm doing, I've done 3000 paid presentations as a keynote, full day workshop. I just finished doing our three day certification on our training. They're 14 hour days. We go from 8.30 in the morning until 10 at night. It, and, and I've never enjoyed it more. Here we are 30 years later. So, you know, why is that? I don't know why. I just know that that is the reason to be. I was speaking at a conference. There was 150 people in the room. And I, at the end of it, I was giddy. And I said, what the heck? I mean, how is that even mm. possible after doing 3,000 presentations? Right. One of the presentations I've done over 1,000 times, John. And interesting, I'm not bored about it. I enjoy it. I'm enthralled by it. Because at the end of it, people are transformed with whatever we're teaching. If it's mm-hmm. purpose work or if it's on my book, Why Aren't You More Like Me or Deliberate Leadership, you know, our goal is really to help people to establish not only self-awareness, and everybody talks about mindfulness and emotional yeah. intelligence and self-awareness. Yeah. I, I have to say, Ken, self-awareness, and, and I've mentioned this before on, on the show, is uh, that for me, self-awareness is the biggest key to unlocking your potential. And it's also the biggest thing that holds people back because you can't teach somebody. Well, I mean, you can help somebody gain self-awareness, mm-hmm. but you can't really teach. But lack of self-awareness just... Uh, it really does, uh, you know, remove you from all the great opportunities. And it probably is is the number one contributor to you not being happy at what you're doing, not being fulfilled what you're doing. But in order to become self-aware, you have to go on a journey. And it's not always a pleasant journey. Fair enough. And the other one is, is again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the question is too big. So mm. we, we are, again, as I mentioned, one of the top companies to help self-awareness. So we have a personality or personal style assessment. Right. We have a values assessment. We have a wellness assessment. We have a self-worth assessment. We have a leadership skills assessment. So all of these are pieces of the puzzle. The other one, when we talk about, in my book, The Quest for Purpose, I get people to do journaling to, around certain questions. So we believe in what they call a narrative and an assessment approach to getting clear in life. And all of these contribute to this journey to this word clarity. You know, when Brendan Bouchard wrote the book, you know, Habits of High Performers, the number one habit of high performers was clarity. And so Mm -hmm. confusion is consternation. Confusion brings uncertainty to people's lives. So that's why it's so important. Now, we don't always have the right answers. We just sort of have this theme or this direction. And if I don't have the answer, then my job is to seek that answer. And I agree with you, John, is that a lot of people maybe they just haven't made that their job or their responsibility it says clarity is your responsibility because nobody else can do it. Yeah. And, and I love that piece that, you know, what you are just was writing, it's taking some notes here about ownership and accountability, because at the end of the day, and I think this is the hardest thing. This is the, one of the hardest things for people, but I think the most liberating thing, I can honestly say the most liberating thing is when you take accountability for your own life and you say, okay, Everything in my life or where I am today is my responsibility. And it's not, and yes, there are, there are exceptions when catastrophic things happen that you've no control over. But generally speaking, where I am today is a result of the decisions I've made. And they're not external. It's like if in work, you know, getting back to work, if you're unhappy in work, you've made a choice to be there. You've mm-hmm. made a choice to stay there. You've, uh, and, and like I said, the, the whole ownership, when you take a step back and you say, okay, I'm going to accept that my life is my responsibility, that is massively liberating. Absolutely. And the other one is, you know, if you go to the other side and say that I am a victim and everything has happened to me, yeah. then you actually have disempowered yourself completely. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not, uh, we, all of us have had stuff happen. Sure. So, statement, John, about catastrophic things have occurred. I still have a choice about how I respond. I still have a choice about what I'm going to do with the hand that I've been dealt. And so life's not always pretty. Life's not always perfect. But can I go towards the positive and the affirmative? And that is a choice. Because if you play the victim, you will never feel fulfilled. And I mean never. I've been doing this Mm -hmm. now for, for 30 years. It will not happen because you are looking to external sources to fulfill you internally. Purpose is an internal journey, an internal fulfillment. And yeah, there's still going to be stuff that happens that's not um, enjoyable. 
but I still have this choice. And that's where this responsibility is, as you said, freeing to me rather than a burden. No, no, no. Because now, guess what? Nobody else has control over you. You have right. freed yourself from you know the opinion, opinions of others. And yeah, that's the other thing that I mentioned in the book, The Quest for Purpose, John, is with social media and, and just the massive amount of communications yeah. going on, every single person around you will have an opinion about what you should or shouldn't do. But very few people have wisdom. And so, yes. so everybody has a thought. He said, hang on. You have never had kids in your life and you're trying to tell me how to parent. <laughs> You've never owned yeah. a business and you're telling me how to run my business. And uh -huh. so all of a sudden, so there's all kinds. Now, on the other side, I do say in today's world, get a mentor, get a coach, listen to podcasts. Yeah. There's no end to resources to be able to assist you. Doing this journey alone is not recommended. And so, yeah. I mean, me hiring uh, Mike way back in 1989 as a coach, that was before coaching was big. And now with podcasts like yours, John, and you're mm -hmm. helping the environment out there. I mean, I was a sales professional. So I know, the, and I was a number one sales uh, professional in my company. And that's how I got in the industry. I started doing sales training. And then it started to evolve that I need to develop the whole person so that they can realize their full potential in all areas of their life, not just work, but, you know, interpersonally and family and physically and mm -hmm. health and financially. All of these contribute to my enjoyment in my fulfillment in life. Yeah, and, and I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I always tell the story too, is when I got my first executive level job, when I was became a VP for the first time, I went out and I hired a coach. Uh, and probably one, one of the greatest things I did, and not only did that coach, you know, off my own dime, private, nobody knew about it uh, in the company, but not only did, did she help me deal with and uh, you know the new level i was at say mm. but she actually w uncovered in me what it is i really wanted to do and at the time is you know i wanted to i said well you know i'd like to actually be the ceo and so and eventually i went on to be ceo of two companies uh and but what i always say to people is i guarantee you in your life you're paying money for personal trainers, maybe you're paying for, maybe if you love golf, you're paying for a golf coach or you have whatever. You're investing all of this money in things that, yeah, they're fun and they're your, your hobbies, whatever. They don't put bread on your table. So it's maybe a good idea to actually invest some of that money in a coach who's going to help you get the most out of your job. Oh, absolutely. I remember when my son was in university and one of his friends asked him, so well, how much is your dad's personal style indicator, which is our personality assessment? And I said, it's right. 45 bucks. He says, $45. I'm not going to spend $45 to figure out who I am. And then, of course, he went out that weekend, uh, went to a movie, uh, had mm -hmm. some pizza, had a beer, probably spent $75. So, <laughs> you, you, you know, we have our priorities in life about, you know, yeah. what is the direction that we need to go in. And you are worth it to invest in yourself to be able to get clear and to feel fulfilled, again, you know, we started this whole show about this. The mm -hmm. saddest state of affairs is for you not to feel fulfilled, to not be mm -hmm. energized for the majority of your life. And as you were saying, if you do, <laughs> if you do buy into, and unfortunately, I mean, as you said today, we live in a very strange culture, right? And it's a very, very strange culture that has evolved. Um, you, you were saying, like, you know, social media um, the pervasive uh, culture and messages are around not not taking responsibility for anything. You know, victim always like feeling like a victim, looking for external things. So I mean, all of this is going on out there, out mm -hmm. there. So it's it's little wonder that people are feeling that they have no purpose in life because they're they're not taking responsibility. They are externalizing everything. So. What would you say is is the first step for somebody who's, as you said, I mean, this is, these are big questions and maybe people are lost or maybe people have become conditioned to not take mm. responsibility for things. What are some of the first steps that somebody can take to awaken themselves? Well, I talk about on the quest for purpose, you know, the first step is you need to shift to say that you're responsible. So if you don't do that, you're not going to do anything. And the next star, uh, next step is first is from a mindset point of view. I said it earlier. Don't get freaked out about where you are. Mm -hmm. Just commit to a journey to move forward. So maybe you hate your job right now, but don't fret about it. Just say I am going to figure out the job, the role, the responsibility, the career direction that fulfills me, and then stick to that. The next one is is now you have to commit to doing the work. 
So that mm-hmm. first prior work is that now you've decided you're going to go down it. So I do there, I'm going to very quickly, there's sort of three original chapters in the quest book where I talk about meaning before purpose, meaning, you know, why are you here? A lot mm-hmm. of purpose books never ask that question, you know, really at, at the belief and the spiritual level, because that is going to drive your decisions. And the next one is, what is your mindset? You know, my colleague, um, Martin Sigelman wrote the book, Learned Optimism, in that optimistic um, responses or mindsets do have predictability for success. So I might know my life direction, John, but if my if I'm pessimistic, I'm not going to get there. So mm-hmm. I talk about your mindset and not having living in fear, not living in worry. So that's sort of part two. And then the next step, and many people don't talk about this, is what are your character traits? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I have a direction. I know what I want to do, but I don't operate in integrity. I don't operate in forgiveness. I don't operate of the love of learning. All of these are proven research traits that uh, one of my colleagues is uh, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, who wrote the book Triggers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who was on, who's been on the show as well. Yeah. Okay, and, and Marshall, awesome, right? So one of the things he said, and I was at an invite-only event in New York with him, he said, Ken, it doesn't matter how much they were going to pay me. And in a lot of cases, this was multiple six figures that the CEOs sure. were being paid. Is if they didn't operate in, in integrity, he says, I couldn't work with them. I knew that I wasn't going to, he wasn't, she wasn't, they weren't going to get the results we wanted if they didn't operate in integrity. And so that's for yourself, your own self, is that uh, don't compromise that. So I talk about these different behaviors. The other thing is we are a distracted society. Uh, The addictions to our mobile devices, myself included, and all kinds of things is what's a priority versus those things moving over. And then after that, I do two primary things in the book, you know, do the assessment so that self-awareness starts. So, you know, what are your core values? Like that's one of our assessments we have. What would it mean if you made the right decision every time, John, going forward? Mm -hmm. The reason people don't is they haven't uh, determined their behavioral values. These are what we call internal motivators. And what if I was to filter my decisions in life through those values? So I know, let's say I want challenge and independence and responsibility for a role, but my job is I am a puppet. I know six months in, I'm going to be miserable. So Mm -hmm. I use those values, not from a self-centered point of view, but from a self-honoring point of view. Mm -hmm. I had one client had a 400% turnover in their staff and uh, he was a call center, but a lot of the people had tranquility as a value. Well, their number one fear is conflict and every day was conflict. (laughs) So, So when I start matching who I am to that, and then health and wellness uh, appear to it. You know, if I sleep, uh, stay up late and I don't eat right, I'm not going to have the cognitive wherewithal or resilience to be successful. And then the final yeah. part is I have a series of questions where I get you to start writing the autobiography. And you know, our life leaves clues. And what I get you to write, I break it down into categories. We don't have time to go through it here. Sure. But what are the things that really have been energizing and you love? in life and has been enjoyable. I don't get you to document any negatives or any neutrals. Those are immaterial. I want you to focus towards those things where interests compel or draw. Motivation is a myth uh, based on the book, meaning I shouldn't have to force myself. Mm -hmm. Give me an audience of 5,000 on a stage. This is not a work for me. I mean, I can't wait to even, even thinking about right now, where's the stage? Let's go. Let's go right there. (laughs) For some of you that are watching, you love golf. And you're out in the course and said, oh, who's holding a gun to my head? And so I have to play golf. So interest, yeah. draw, and compel. When you start documenting it, which is what I did you know, over 30 years ago, I had 60 pages of documentation of those things I love. And then you start fine-tuning and going through that. We call it a keyword search. Mm-hmm. And you said there's these themes and essence in life. And those really become sort of the fundamental focus of your direction of life. And it's freeing. And then opportunities expand. You know, some of the jobs that people do aren't even invented yet. I mean, if I think about fiber optic repair person, that didn't exist 25 years ago. Or the internet was just building in the year 2000. And everybody said, oh, the internet's now going to put us out of work. Well, there's never been more technicians, more database people than ever before. And to be be honest, I mean, just building on the theme that you just said there, uh, 
you know, once upon a time, it was maybe difficult for people to become a consultant to work for themselves or whatever. Now, with, you know, sites like Upwork and that you can, and as long as you've got access to the internet, you can live and work from anywhere if you want. So there, the options are, mm. are, are endless uh, for you now if you want to take a chance. But the point is, as we said, is uh, you have to take responsibility for your life and make make some decisions and say, and, and stop feeling like you're powerless, right? Because you're not. Oh, it's the absolute opposite. And you, again, you might not know where to start. Yeah. But is it appropriate to mention the free gift today, John? Yes, please right. go ahead. Okay, so what we're doing is some of you say, I don't know where to start. Well, let me give you a full e-copy of my book, the The Quest for Purpose. And we're doing this for John and for um, the podcast today. And here's where you'll be able to find it. My speaker site is Ken Key, spelled K-E-N-K-E-I-S dot com slash pipeline. And so it's a hidden URL and uh, we'll make sure it's in the show notes and you'll be able mm -hmm. to go there, download the book and follow it step by step. And then my other encouragement is if you do this step and you want to learn more or you have some questions, then, then please contact me and I'll be able to respond or the team will be able to respond to you to be able for you to go on your journey. Now, here's the sad part, John. Is there some people that are listening and watching this show? They have the need to get clear, but they won't take action. And so my encouragement is take the action, kenkeys.com slash pipeline. Take the action. It's there for you. And then if you do the work, you will get the results that you are looking mm -hmm. for. And even if it's a few percent better, that's better than nothing. Hey, absolutely. And um, listen, that's very generous, uh, very generous, Ken. And I do I encourage people to do it. Uh, you know, just take a step, take a chance, do something. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we, uh, as we said before, we, 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 um, we unfortunately live in a shortcut culture today um, where the idea of hard work is kind of downplayed and almost looked down upon. Mm -hmm. But listen, if investing in yourself is going to make your life better, the people around you's life better. I mean, it, there's so many upsides and benefits to it if you just give it a chance. And I love what you said earlier, because I ad nauseum on this show um, say this idea when people go, well, where, I don't have time. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I don't have time. And I just say, I'm, I'm the busiest I've ever been. And I say, no, you're not. You're the most distracted you've ever been. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. it's the, mm -hmm. If Agreed. you eliminated some of those distractions. Listen, Ken, this has been fantastic. And thank you very much for making this available to our audience. And maybe you come back again and we'll talk more because I feel like we could we could uh, peel back a few more layers of this onion. <laughs> well, I just I just finished a 36-hour certification on all our tools. So there's slightly a little bit more content available. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think that's a good start for today. Uh, the quest for purpose, as Ken said, kenkeys.com slash pipeline. We will have it in the bio and all of this. So, um, And Ken, before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, all this information will be in the contributor profile, but just spend a couple of minutes. Well, one of our other sites is crgleader.com. We have all these tools and resources and assessments. Anybody can go online at any time, get the assessment, take it and participate. So we have 4 million words of content, but 12 core assessments that really develop the whole person. You don't need certification or anything. You just can go there. It's for you, the learner, to transform your life. Fantastic. And like we said, if um, you know, getting to know yourself is going to really have a massive impact on the rest of your life. So really, really encourage you to take a look at this. And thank you, Ken, for joining us today. I was really appreciate it. It was great. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.